It's Boxing Day, which means two things, food comas and football. Food coma complete, we're off to the county ground for today's game. It's Swindon Town against small Polish side, Warsaw. Let's get it, up the swing, let's go. Oh damn, should have bought the sunglasses. It's a beautiful day for ball here at the county ground uh, ahead of the game against Walsall. There were several subplots to this game. Uh, first of all being that despite the fact town at home today we will be wearing our away kit is in support of the homeless charity and campaign No Home Kit. So I've got the green one on here. It's actually the 2017-18 shirt I believe instead of this year's this year's second another subplot is it could be we clap in the town players of the pitch here in their lovely green kit the second subplot is that today could be the day we announce Charlie Austin's return to Swindon Town it is believed that he is in attendance here today at the county ground his wife already tweeted a picture of his kids wearing Swindon Town shirts so I think it's pretty obvious that that's a done deal it's just about when they announce it which is very exciting so the visitors then, Walsall, despite being Polish and in League Two, they are a pretty good side. They haven't lost in the last eight in all competitions. Danny Johnson up front's going to be a big player for them, scored 12 goals in the league already this season. I believe he's a joint second top goal scorer in the division. So we've got to stop Danny Johnson. The rest of the players don't really score very much. If we stop Danny Johnson, we should be all right. And as always, if you like the town, don't be a clown. Please like and subscribe. Let's go. Warsaw get us underway then, playing in all white but against Town in their all green strip. An early chance for Town from a corner. It falls to Johnny Esther, but his shot is blocked and cleared away. Swindon then work it through the middle this time. Again, it's Johnny Esther charging forward with the ball, but the pass is too long for Wakeling. Lovely bit of skill here from Knowles. See you later, but poor ball in. Walsall keep coming. Free kick finds DJ on the edge of the box who blasts it just over the top of the town goal. Decent support from Walsall who are doing their best to try to keep warm in the Arkles. Darcy races down the left but poor touch at the wrong moment lets him down. Hutton then jinks down the right but his cross is just overhead. Not too much to shout about for the town faithful just yet. But then Darcy charges down the right, crosses the ball into the box with the hands low. Keeper stops the first shot, but he can't stop the second one. There's 1-0 to Swindon Town, and the crowd goes wild. Probably out of surprise at a real goal from open play more than anything else. Our reporter in the stands had this to say. Oh, 1-0 to the town. Let's go. Walsall really don't know how to read a room. After a crack corner, it finds its way back to Knowles again, whose cross shot takes the deflection of Hutton and finds its way into the back of the net. And he runs off like a scored a world. Fair play, I'd probably do the exact same thing. FB Tracy, live and direct, almost gets us right back ahead, but for a good save from the Walsall goalkeeper. He then digs out across, but again Walsall clear, and the referee blows for half time. Second half then, and kicking towards the town end. Let's freak and go, boys, and get this dub. Hutton again comes down the right, and again the cross is overcooked. Don't think even Charlie Austin could bail us out there. Ellis's game sadly comes to an early end. Glad we and RHM come off the bench as Lindsay tries to change things up going for the win. The right side wasn't working so we try to come down the left this time but it's blocked. Lavinia again comes down the left, tries cutting onto his right but it's blocked again. The through ball comes forward to Hepburn Murphy but blocked again. We're coming back down the right this time. Hutton whips in a ball with nobody attacking it. Second ball's blocked. Third ball blocked. 
These Walsall guys are definitely living up to the wall part of their name. Hutton continues his one-man mission down the right. He beats one, whips it in. Penalty shout? Well, probably not, but at least we found a man with a cross this time. God, we literally rely so much on Hutton to create. Once again, the cross is blocked. Short corner this time. Gladwin whips it in, but headed away. Gladwin again has a chance to cross. Again, it's cleared. Walsall border defending and break. Johnson should score from this chance but fires it straight at Bryn. Another chance is then slid away before they can get the shot off. Johnny Esther tries a mazy run but still Town can't find that final ball at the crucial moment. All these wasted chances and you know what that means. Walsall apply the pressure and the inevitable eventually happens. Manimont popping up with a 94th minute winner for the Black Country outfit. And here's how our stadium reporters reacted. Looks like Warsaw have won it at the at the death in stoppage time. Swindon were on top of so much of this game, they've just thrown it away. It really isn't clicking in the final third for Swindon and Warsaw come here and done a job on us. Absolute gut punch. And they're crap. And they are absolute rubbish. How are we losing to this lot? They're useless. Well, to be fair, to be fair, we are also pretty bad. Like we just aren't a good team yeah. this year. The sooner Charlie Austin comes, the better. Absolutely shit. We have no forwards though, do we? We've got no option. There's nothing up front. Absolutely nothing up front. Time for one last town player to fall on their ass, and there's the full-time whistle. A disappointing home defeat for Swindon. Fair play to Warsaw. I think their fans enjoyed that one. All right, we're here post-match with Joe. Joe, you were reporting on today's game from yep. the gantry at the county ground. What's your take on Swindon Town 1, Walsall 2? I think it was decent. Swindon played quite well. A 2-1 home defeat was decent. They probably edged the, the game in terms of how it was played, but I think I said after about 20 minutes on the live blog, I've seen this film before and I didn't like the ending and it played out almost exactly like you thought it would do. And the fact that it's happened basically every game this season is incredibly worrying. Um, so you're worried about the direction that this swimming team is taking? Yes. I think they play well quite a lot, performance-wise. But when you don't win basically any of those games, it's tough to keep thinking that it's going to come. So you were in the press conference after the game with Scott Lindsay. Um, what did you make of Scott Lindsay's mood and the way he was speaking after that home defeat? I was slightly surprised given how he usually is, um, how down he was on the performance. Because performance-wise, I thought it was uh, all right. It wasn't, wasn't bad, but he said that he didn't think the players had the commitment or the sort of confidence that they should have had and had last week. Do you agree with that? Do you think it was down to the players not having confidence? Or what do you put this consistent inability of Swindon Town to put the ball in the back of the net? What do you put that down to, the players or the manager? Because it's got to be one, right? Can, can, can you I know. Have, can I have both? You say both. Well, I think, you know, the fact that it happens a lot shows that it's got to be at least partially the manager's fault. But also, it does just seem to be a lot of poor decision-making from players a lot of the time. Final question, this is the big one. Just we're seeing a lot of people on Twitter this evening calling for Scott Lindsay's head, although to be fair, we do see that no, after most games at the moment. Wins, really. um, are you in the Lindsay in or Lindsay out camp? I would be assessing other candidates. I don't... I, can I be a Lindsay agnostic? Well, I guess so, I guess so. I mean, it's, it's, it doesn't really help as you sit on the fence. But well, I, I, I don't want to say out because it's lovely. It's a very nice man. And the football's fine, and we are still fifth. But also, I, I would be thinking... We're only fifth because we played more games. Oh, yeah, but, I, but I would be thinking, if we were to move on, who would that be to? And if there's an obvious upgrade, then I would probably take it. Yeah, so basically we're only keeping Scott Lindsay because he's a nice dude and there's no one else. Um, I kind of agree with Joe here. I think that, you know, Swindon Town weren't too bad. We were pretty unlucky with the two goals, but how many times can you keep being unlucky how many times can you keep going out there and not threatening the goal and, and not playing you know entertaining football there were boos at the end there Swindon Town needs something to change Charlie Austin was in attendance and I have now seen a photo of him at the county grounds Charlie Austin was definitely at the game there today 
We need that man in, don't we? Yeah, there's a lot of op- crosses and just some general chances of thinking, yeah, Charlie scores that. So the thing that the team clearly lacks is someone to be a real focal point at the top of the pitch, and he is quite obviously that. So hopefully he can come in sooner rather than later. Well, unfortunately for both of us, we'll be at the Northampton game bringing you another vlog. So if you want to see that and you like the town, don't be a clown. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Thank you very much, Josie. If you like the town, you are a clown. <laughs> but at the moment, yes. All right, up this way. Let's up go. This way.